Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're going to be learning about the method of joints, like I talked about last time. Now, method of joints is important because it's the best way to solve for the forces in a simple truss. Um, as we get to more complex kind of crazy trusses, there's something called the method of sections. We'll learn about that later. Um, but method of joints is pretty simple, and I quite like it. So how it works is this. I'll go ahead and get all the text up and we talk about it. Method of joints is I take each point, and I have to remember that at all of these joints where the forces are applied, they have to be in equilibrium. Each of them, this point right here, this point right here, all the points within this truss have to be in equilibrium, otherwise it's moving. Um, and then it's not in equilibrium. So for this entire truss to be in equilibrium, all these points have to be in equilibrium. Which means you can have a free body diagram for each of the joints. You go to the joint, you make one right here, right here, and right here. Now these are free body diagrams that are just at points, which means we don't get our some of the moment equations, um, but we still get our um, some of the forces equations. So you get three equations per joint to solve, which is usually enough. You just find one where you only have less than three unknowns, and you solve there. And you can also take the entire free body diagram, the entire truss as a whole, and use your regular six equations for some of the moments and some of the forces if it's in 3D or if we don't have. 3D situation like this one, like this planar, I'll get three equations. Okay, so with that, I'm sorry, I messed up. Um, since it's 2D, we only get two equations per each of these. Sorry, three equations for the whole thing. Now, I think I've pretty much gotten everything here. Let's just look at this for a moment. So if we look at this, we see we have a force of 500 newtons pulling right here. Going to have some reaction forces at C and at A, and we're going to have some internal forces throughout these crusts that are holding that back. If we want to free by a diagram here, what we do is we cut it. Take a pen, cha, cut it. And everything we cut turns into a force. As a note, if you don't know what direction to use, I always suggest you point the arrows away. Okay? Point the arrows away. And this is where it gets fairly confusing. The arrows going away from a joint says that the force is in tension. Okay? The arrows going away from the joint says the force is in tension. But you're like, but that doesn't make any sense. You said earlier that this was compression, right? I did. I did. I totally did. But here's where it gets a little bit weird. Um, this force right here is sort of resisting this member. It's resisting that member. And so if it's pushing down, then the member is pushing up. And so that's what the member is feeling. And it's, it's a strain, but just remember this. Point the arrows away. That means tension. Um, and if you get a negative number, it means it's actually in compression. So don't forget that. And so we have this free body diagram. Your book always does a perfect job of guessing, usually. Um, you won't. So just remember, if you get a negative sign, and you had it pointed away first, that means the arrows should be reversed, and it's in compression. So your stuff for analysis, a whole lot of stuff here. First, you draw a free body diagram of the entire truss. This is usually to find your um, reaction forces at the different supports. After you've done that, you go to each point and you try to find one that has one unknown or two unknowns, and you solve. Look for one that has only one unknown force because that's just awesome. Um, you can simplify this somewhat if you realize that, like, well, there's two unknowns, but only one of them is in the y direction. That makes things simple. Um, you'll see that quite a bit with situations maybe like this truss right here, which of course I messed up. Um, this truss right here, we might have a one support right here. You know what this Fy is, and you realize that this force goes in the y direction, but this one does not. So technically, you can solve that without any algebra. Look for situations like that. It makes things easy. So on each of those individual points, you are going to solve some of the forces in the x direction and y direction until you have solved for all of the forces. Always point your arrows away to start, and if you get a negative number, that means it's in compression for that force. And you just keep on doing it until you have it all done. Now, here is a little point that really can help you. Sometimes you're going to have extra members, which aren't really necessary. Um, and these extra members have a purpose more for stability. Um, in real life, they would be feeling forces because there's all this heat and um, other things that are causing things to move. We're always 
looking at this magical world that has no friction and no air resistance and no heat. In real life, they would be experiencing forces. But when we're doing our analysis, they don't have any forces just based on the load. They based on like you know um, the expansion of everything, but not based on the load. So what are these zero force members doing? Well, they're any place where there's no external force pressing on them, and there's no reason for them to be there. For example, in this case, we have this kind of crazy truss with these two here, and you're like, well, this is just supporting it. Maybe it's making it more stable. But you can see that if I look at this point, just that point right there, I'm going to get my pin out. So I'm going to cut it. Oh, that's not my pin. That's my laser pointer. Here we go. I'm going to draw it. So I've got force. I'm going to call that AF because it's going from A to F. Okay, so force AF going up. And I've got force AB going right. Okay, and that's it. That's it. I've got force AF going up, force AB going right. Nothing else. Now, there's no way for this to be an equilibrium at this point unless those forces are zero. Both of those are zero. Same thing up here. Both of these forces have to be zero. You can use that to solve. Because sometimes you'll find a zero force member just kind of hanging out in your truss. And you can use that to make your equations a little bit more simple. Just don't forget that. If you get zero for one of the forces, it's not a bad answer. It might be the correct answer. Just look and see if it is a zero force member. Okay. So I think that's everything. I think next time. Oh, we got a little bit more in here. I thought I'll just skip on you. Okay, now, another place we can see these zero force members is when we have collinear members, right here. You see all those members are collinear. Well, you're like, okay, so, so what? But then let's look at point D right here, point D. So you see we have, okay, we have force DE going in one direction, cool. And we have force DC going in the other direction, which is also fine. Okay, nice. And then we have this force right here, force AD. Good. And you're like, okay, so what? But look at this. These are perpendicular, so you know that force DE and force DC, they have to be the same. They don't necessarily have to be zero, but they have to be the same. And then you're like, okay. But there is no force over here to block this. There's nothing over here to block AD. So the only way that point can stay in equilibrium is if AD is equal to zero. If AD is equal to zero. So with that in mind, we realize that AD must be zero. And we can get rid of this member if we want to. Now, in real life, these are used for rigidity and for stability because in real life, things can bend. Um, here in our problems, they can't. So don't forget that. Okay, just don't forget that. So zero force members are helpful, and this is one of those great situations where you can see it fairly easily. It's a member that is perpendicular to two collinear members. Now, you might remember that now. That'll be fine. We're going to do some examples with it so you can get in a better idea of how to do this. And in future problems, you're going to have completely mastered this. So let's move forward and rock this. I'll see y'all soon. Bye bye.